We'd like to welcome Kim Hampton to the show. Welcome, Kim. Thank you. Thank you. And we are really excited to have you on the show. And for those of you who don't know, Kim was in the first ever WNBA game. You were, at, like, groundbreaking. You were part of history. <laughs> I'd say so. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kim, I wanted to ask you, you started basketball at a relatively late age in comparison to most professional athletes. How were you introduced to basketball, and when did you know that you wanted to take it further? Well, <laughs> when I was a freshman in high school, I was six feet tall at the time, and the first day of school, this little man runs up to me, you got to play basketball, right? you got to play basketball. <laughs> it was the high school coach, and he asked, and, and because I had never played and I already felt goofy and tall and I just didn't want to do anything that I didn't, you know, know how to do. It was going to make me feel any more goofy and tall than I already was. So I told him no, but until it was probably four days before the actual tryouts that I told him I would try out for the team. And I always say that that was the day that kind of changed my life, the trajectory of my life. Uh, I realized that I wanted to take it serious and I realized I wanted to go to college on a scholarship I would say my sophomore year because I had developed I had started developing and I could see the light at the end of the tunnel kind of like oh I'm gonna yeah. be good at this you know wow. so and that's when I started setting some goals you know I want to go to college on a scholarship I want to get out of Louisville I don't want to go to Kentucky I don't want to go you know I just want to <laughs> see some things so yeah that's how I felt when I went to college. I wanted to get out of my home state and just go. Yeah. <laughs> as a young as a young teenager playing basketball, were there any athletes that you looked up to? Well, when I grew up in high school, well, see, you guys are kids, but <laughs> well, I graduated from high school in 80, 1980, yeah. So uh, women's basketball wasn't big. It wasn't what it is today. As a matter of fact, um, it was still AIAW. It hadn't gone NCAA yet. And women's basketball wasn't played on television, so I didn't know what school to go to. Um, so I didn't have female role models to look up to. Um, you know, we didn't hardly see the, the Olympic team or anything like that. So my the, the role models that I had were the NBA players. Then like Moses Malone, he was a left-hander. And so, you know, he was a good rebounder and he played well around the basket. You know, some of those players, Dr. J and those guys. So those were the, some of the players that I looked up to. And in terms of... Um, choosing your school, where did you, in terms of college, what was your deciding factor? What were some of your ideas? Do you really want to know? <laughs> yes, yes, I the chose, viewers want to know. <laughs> I chose Arizona State because the weather was warm and the campus was beautiful. How about that? <laughs> that yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, but, but, but because we were not NCAA, I, that means I couldn't take, a, well, well, I couldn't take paid official visits because my parents weren't going to pay for me to go to University of Hawaii or pay for me to go to two or three schools in California and pay for me to travel across the country to make my mind up. So I, the, the schools that were far, I pretty much had to go off of speaking to the coaches, some of the, the players and, you know, and things like that. Them sending me brochures and looking at it, looking at the academia, you know, and things like that. But there was just something about Arizona State that just stood out. I mean, I can't even... I can't tell you what it was, <laughs> but I guess it was where I was supposed to be. Yeah. Warm weather is very seducing, I am, by the way. <laughs> yeah. After college, what was it like being in your early 20s to mid-20s where there is no professional bas women's basketball league in America, but then you have an opportunity to go play overseas? Was that a big culture shock for you? Um, yes and no. Um, I I was, I've always been adventurous and just wanted to go and see the world and travel. That's why I left Louisville, Kentucky, which is my hometown, to go, you know, to Arizona. And so I just kind of wanted to keep growing. Um, I wanted to, I got a chance when I was in college to play, to, uh, to represent the USA and to play, you know, in the Goodwill Games, you know, and things like that. So I got a taste of that and I knew that I could play professional ball abroad. So I was ready for it. I wanted to go. I was, yeah. And I played my first six years in Spain. Y si yo hablo español también, si yo puedo hablar con vosotros en español si queréis, sin problema. ¡Excelente! Aunque yo gato para la canestro en Italia por cuatro años y medio. ¡Ah, qué buena, buena! Y luego fue un año en Japón y luego un año en Francia también. Y fue justo increíble. Yo todavía tengo amigos y antiguos compañeros que vienen a visitarme hoy, ¿sabes? Vienen a venir a Nueva York. Y fue justo increíble. ¡Ah, qué bueno! 
That's amazing. So kind of piggybacking a little bit off of Mike's question, when you graduated from college, there was no WNBA. Mm -hmm. And you had your male counterparts who had an opportunity to stay within the United States and play. Mm -hmm. What was your feelings about that? Did you have any feelings that in order for you to play professionally that you needed to go overseas? Well, you know, us as women have always taken the backseat to men in sports. You know, it just is what it is. <laughs> you know, but anyway. <laughs> you know, so I knew that eventually um, a professional league for women would happen. I just didn't think that it would be in my era or my time when I was playing. But I, I just knew that it would happen. So, I mean, all we had was what we had. And, and you know, I wasn't making waves of it. I was just looking for the opportunity to do it. And when you got the the notice, I don't know how you were notified that the WNBA was established. What was your feelings then? Well, I'll, <laughs> I'll tell you the story. Um, actually, the ABL started first. It started before the WNBA. You had the '96 Olympic team, and you had you know it was it was Lisa Leslie, Cheryl Swoops. Um, you know, Ruthie Bolton, Rebecca Lobo, you had all of these players that were there. So the ABL started at the end of that, At well, it started um, at, at right after the Olympics, you know, that the end of our, um, the end of our term in Europe. So it started early. And I can remember they, them approaching me, some of the players. It was one of the players that she was kind of acting as an agent as well. And she says, Kim, we're starting a professional league in America. You know, we're offering six figures for salaries and stuff. And so I immediately called my agent. And I was like, hey, you know, I was like, Bruce, you know, they're talking about this league, ABL. He's like, nope, nope, don't sign anything. He said, I know that they're starting that. I was like, well, why? I was like, we can play in America. It's going to be played, you know, during the summer. He was like, no. He said, Okay, he said, the NBA is going to be starting a league, and you're going to play in that one. I said, the NBA is going to start a professional league? He's like, yeah, they're going to play in NBA arenas. He said, it's going to be much bigger. It's going to be, so that's what you're waiting on. And I was like, are you sure? And he was like, yeah. He was like, really? <laughs> and so what happened was, in the interim, while all of this was happening, we were still in Europe, they sent a scout, Renee Brown, um, uh, they sent a scout over to Europe to visit these countries where players like myself, Cynthia Cooper, Teresa Weatherspoon, Sue Wicks, have been playing for many years, you know, to just see all of the players. And what they decided to do was to have an elite draft. So they chose 32 players uh, that have been playing in Europe. And um, I happen to be one of those 32 players. So the first two players, they decided, it was eight teams that started, and they decided to place two players on each team, preferably close to, you know, where they went to school, like Lisa Leslie went to U USC, so she is in L.A., mm -hmm. Rebecca Lobo, UConn, so they put her in New York, um, you know, and things like that. Um, and then the second two players, they drafted, so I was drafted, um, I was um, the third player on the New York Liberty team, I was drafted in the first round, and New York had the fourth pick, so I was the fourth fourth pick to come and play for the New York Liberty and you know I didn't know what to expect but I can just remember my teammate in Italy at the time she had been drafted she was in the elite you know and went to Cleveland and I heard her teammate and her roster and I was like oh man I want to go to Cleveland I want to play in Cleveland <laughs> I didn't even understand you know like yeah. what what playing in a market like New York can do for you for your life and career I mean I'm still here and it's just Amazing. So it was such a blessing, you know, that I got uh, selected and drafted yeah. to play for New York. That's awesome. Yeah, that was 21 years ago. Good thing you How listened about to Bruce, huh? I know. Well, <laughs> I know. And I'm, and I'm just so proud that the league is still going on. You know, they, we're kicking off the 21st season of the WNBA, May 13th, New York Liberty. You That's know. awesome. Yeah. Can you take me back to that first game? Oh. What your feelings were at that moment? Mm-hmm. Uh, it was just an emotional roller coaster at the time because I can remember us, you know, being dressed. Well, first of all, both, you know, we, we flew out to L.A. It was before the game. We flew out a week early because we had, it was the first game, you know, it was New York against L.A. You know, it was the big media hype. CBS was covering it. You know, Nike was the sponsor. So it was just, it was huge. And we had media. Um, appearances and all, all week long so you know it was just a really busy and hectic time but when we finally got on the bus and we rode down underneath the Great Western Forum and then we when we were getting off it was like paparazzi it was just crazy I mean like it had to have been like 100 people from the media as we got off the bus and we went in the locker room 
And I was just sitting there thinking. I just picked a stall and I was sitting there like this. I was like, oh my God. You think of all the history, like we have finally made it. And I had tears in my eyes because it was just like, I, you know, I thought that I figured that they would have it, but I just didn't think again that I would be a part of it. And I was just thinking, oh my gosh, we are making history. We're getting ready to make history. You know, and, and I think about it and I still get teary. And, you know, and I, and I, and then I, I got up and I was like, man, I wonder what great players sit in this seat. You know, Bob Cousy, my, you know, Michael Jordan. So I went and made sure I rubbed my butt in every stall. <laughs> in every stall. I was like, okay, let me get some of that. Yeah, Moses Malone, let me get some of that. And I just started naming, you know. So yeah. I was, and then uh, <clears throat> both teams were super nervous. And we got out on the court. Lisa Leslie and I were blessed and fortunate to do the first ever jump ball. We had to do a ceremonial tip off first. And then we did the official, you know, uh, jump ball. And gosh, I scored the first two points for the New York Liberty. Penny Toller scored the first two points of the WNBA. Um, I took the first shot, but I missed. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I came back and scored the first two points. And, you know, it was just, um, you know, and, and here we are 21 years later. It's just in the, in the talent. It's just incredible. Yeah, yeah. So, looking at the N the WNBA now, mm -hmm. what are some of the obstacles that you see in terms of having this, you know, reaching some of the same popularity and numbers in terms of the NBA? And do you think those issues are being addressed properly? Well, um, you know, it's just so different. When, when you talk about the NBA and you talk about the WNBA, it's two different animals because the NBA, they breed one, who's the superstar, who's the next superstar. Um, all of the rules dictate offense because they're like, it's, it's about spectacularism. You know, they're not, you can't hand check, you can't do anything. I mean, you think back to the bad boys when they oh, played man. against, you know, those brawls <laughs> yes. and things like that. Yes. You know, no one, I mean, every week somebody scoring 50 points. Like that just would not happen that often back in the day, you know, so... Um, you know, I was watching one of the sports shows and they were talking about, you know, athletes, you know, being better. I believe, yes, players have evolved. We're faster, quicker, stronger with the technology. We, we eat different, you know, I mean, we, there's so much. Yes. So I believe that athletes are definitely superior, but I believe too the rule changes of the game have made it a lot different. So for the men, you know, it's, 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 it's a money thing, you know, and, and I think that's what it is for women because we're not making that type of money. We don't have the sponsorships, you know, you know, and things and people aren't into it. We still play below the rim. There are some players that can dunk, but we play below the rim. It's more team oriented, you know, and things like that. So it's just a little different and it just depends on what you like. If you like spectacular, you know, corporate America loves spectacular, you know, all the celebrities want to go and be seen in the court mm -hmm. side, you know, or if you are a true, you know, basketball fan, then, you know, it's the WNBA because they have amazing players. They're athletic. Um, they play team ball. You know, so it just it's just really different. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. One of the things I've noticed with the WNBA is that it hasn't gotten as much exposure. But I think one thing that ESPN can do and some of the other networks is market it a little bit differently to get some more eyeballs up. You look at this past women's basketball tournament with UConn going out. I think a lot of people are sort of down on women's college basketball because UConn has dominated for so long. Yeah. For me, though, watching them lose in the Final Four the way that they did, I think it adds to a little bit more excitement coming into next season. Do you agree with that? that with, yeah. with UConn losing the way they did, that people will possibly be more engaged watching women's basketball next year? Yeah, but I, I, to me, though, I just don't think I, – I don't think it should be – it should be dependent upon whether UConn wins or loses or that they're dominant. I really think that that every program, every individual that plays should should – should really put effort in and focus on what they could do to get better to to compete against a UConn. Guess what? Gino has the opportunity to get the best players in the in the in the world. You know, I mean, um, he can. But you you take don't take away the fact and don't forget that he pushes those players mentally and physically harder than probably most programs. You know, if you want that for I heard if you want cushy feeling like oh, you're doing a great job, Mike. <laughs> you know, I'm proud of you. You know, you're right. not getting that from Gino, you know, yeah, from exactly. what they say, you know. But he's building character. He's building strength, you know, just so that you can be prepared in these situations. But they're going to be like anyone else. They're, they're going to have great recruiting seasons, you know, and then they're going to have some lulls where they're not. And that's what it was. The, you know, so I just, I think our focus is wrong. You know, I think, I think the focus, I think more kids... You know, everyone's dream, I want to go to UConn, I want to go to UConn. Now, you know, with Dawn, you know, yeah, some players, you don't want to diversify. Or you might have, you know, players in Maryland. You know, Maryland is really big, so some players want to stay home, you know, and things like that. But 
I think players should challenge themselves to want to go to other programs, to make other programs, to build other programs up. I think coaches should challenge themselves to really learn to utilize, you know, the talent that they have and to improve on decision making, improve on people skills, you know, and things like that. You know, I just, you know, UConn is going to be UConn. You know, but they but they're like everyone else. They can be beat. And and the funny thing about it is, I told everyone they're just not used to being in that situation. They're not used to close games. So if you notice, when it was close down towards the end, they started missing free throws, just like everybody who played. You know, that they, uh, they missed layups. You know, uh, they got scored on. They made turnovers. You know, and things like that. It's just that they are so comfortable because they, they are used to play hard. Points. They're winning by thirty <laughs> points. They're never in a pressure situation. Right. So, yeah. So I was wondering if maybe we could just touch a little bit on life after basketball for you. Sure. How you made that transition? And <clears throat> ladies, she's got beautiful skin. So maybe I can get her to give us some of her beauty tips on how we can get skin just like hers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, life after basketball. I've always had. Like when I was a little girl, I always wanted to sing. I always wanted to be a professional singer and secretly be a model. But I was always bigger. Now, I wasn't heavy. I'm the heaviest I've ever been in life now. But, you Me know, too. I was. <laughs> <laughs> I love cupcakes. What can I say? <laughs> I like food. <laughs> Just Me food. too. Food. Yeah, food. Yeah. Yes, I tell you about food a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot. <laughs> I'm a foodie. Like, if I could get a show where I traveled and. And saw sports and, you know, something like that. And we are, or, or, you know, the, the night scene as far as music, you know, and it was food during the day. Oh, I'd be a happy camper. Maybe mm, we should maybe do we that. Should do that. <laughs> we should do that. I would totally be mm, on that. Yeah. Two we travel to the these town, exotic eat places. Eat. And then at night going, you know, where it's live music or something. Yeah. or hmm. I like it. I like Don't it. steal our idea. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, so I always secretly wanted to do those things, but I was shy and uh, but I just started pushing myself and making myself sing a lot more and I'm not and speaking is one of the things that I really love I love because I was always so shy growing up um you know and I know that a lot of girls us as girls you know we have a tendency to doubt ourselves in high school I was just in a high school speaking and you know and girls are so shy you know we want to fit in and we want to belong but I tell everyone you know, we weren't created to fit in and belong. We were created to shine as an individual. We each have our own individual DNA. So I love motivating and, and inspiring, you know, girls and women because us as girls and women, we ha we tend to be nurturers and we put ourselves on the back burner because number one, young, we want to belong and we want to be liked, you know, and two, as we get older, we kind of feel like, oh, obligated, that's what we should do, you know, so um, that and, you know, I just, so I'm not quite where I want to be, so it is still a transition. You know, I always say, even with the guys, it just seems like they move right on into whatever it is that they're doing. <laughs> 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 you know, but um, uh, you know, I just it's it, it's it's um, you know, I think it's it's partly me understanding and knowing how to ask, you know, and make the ask and who to ask and and just being diligent. My thing is, I don't want to be a pest to people. But, uh, you know, I, sometimes, you know, in order to, to make things happen, you know, I can't do what I'm, I was created to do if I don't make the ask to make it happen. So that's been my lesson here. That's an excellent thing to, to remember. You know, I am shy myself inherently, and so I tend to just kind of sit back and, and see, observe my scenery. And then sometimes, you know, there's things I want to ask and I want to know, but I'm just like, oh, what would they think of my question? Do they think I'm silly? So um, I thank you for sharing that, mm. and it's something that I can take with me, and hopefully somebody out there will take that with them, for and sure. they'll blossom. Now, I did ask, I did tease for one of your little beauty secrets for that glowing skin you have. <laughs> uh, sweaty. <laughs> I, sw I sweat profusely. I mean, and I have since I've been a child. Uh, uh, that's probably the, the number one thing that whatever is in there, it's coming out, you know. But uh, I've skin, I've, you know, I never even had acne during puberty or anything. I've always just had great skin. And so literally soap and Vaseline. All right, but remember Vaseline. If you, you know, if you ever use this, I'm your girl. <laughs> uh, no, but yeah, it was just simple stuff. Now I use better products, you know, and things like that because I know a little bit more. But, um. Uh, you know, I'm basic. I mean, I use coconut oil, like organic, you know, organic 
virgin coconut oil, you know, yeah. now and things like that. So just, I'm real simple, real low key. Um, you know, the majority of the time I don't wear makeup, <laughs> you know, and stuff like that. But it's just because I sweat so much, <laughs> you know, and it's just like, ugh. <laughs> you don't have your face running yeah, down, exactly. have your makeup running down your face. Mm -hmm. All right, so we got coconut oil, mm -hmm. like the pure coconut oil, and Vaseline, ladies. So. Mm -hmm. I'm going to dig through my crates and get my Vaseline, and I'm going to run to the store and get my coconut oil. Stop. So. No, you're scared. No, you're scared. It might work for me. What works for me might not work for you. So, you I'm going to try it. Let's we'll see try if it, it works. Maybe it works. Just a little bit. Yeah, just try it. And especially at night. You know, like clean your face at night, and then just put it, you know, put put some on. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, you, you could try it, too. I should try it. I will. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kim, it was such a pleasure having you. And Thank feel free you. to come back anytime yeah, to talk to us it. about sports, whatever you got going yeah. on. And we're going to talk about our show because we're going to eat Definitely, and party. yes. We're <laughs> going to be, yes. <laughs> it's nightlife. So exactly. You stay tuned. But thank you, Kim, so thank very you. much. Thank you. Such a pleasure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, Mike. Thank you. Nice I, hope you. I hope your arm is okay. I've been <laughs> <elbowing> <laughs> you, <laughs> you 